Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Field Trips. If my face is covered in mud, it's because I just got owned by some plant life trying to get here. That is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that was a little bit of a workout. Look at my boat covered in all kinds of junk. <sighs> that was a workout. But I am here still in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, Door County. I'm in the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal. This episode is really a continuation of last, so you should really watch that one first. But we are here fishing for King Salmon, Chinook Salmon here on Lake Michigan. We learned all about them last episode. These guys have one of the most unique life cycles in the animal kingdom, let alone in fish. These fish are coming up here to spawn to lay their eggs. They're all four years old and they're all gonna die here in a few weeks once they spawn. Very, very unique in the animal kingdom. So if you saw last episode, John Soul and I, good buddy of mine and a guide here in Door County, fished for these damn salmon for hours and hours we saw a thousand of them come out of the water and did not get a bite until literally over time the last minute at the end of the day oh there was one but they were everywhere and we only caught one got her man oh my god <laughs> i about can't lift this thing in the boat man you kidding me <laughs> Look at that fish, man! Are you kidding me? <laughs> now here I am, I didn't get one, and now I am like hell bent on getting one of these things from the kayak. So I brought the lightning strike down here, just put it in the water, and wouldn't you know it, after nine hours of seeing these fish literally constantly, I've been out here gearing up, rigging up rods for about 30, 45 minutes and haven't seen a single fish swirl until just then. So I don't know where they possibly could have gone. This is their final destination. They're here to spawn. Uh, so I, I don't know where else they could be, but they're not here in the canal where they were last time, but we ended up getting our fish actually over at Strawberry Creek where the fish hatchery was. And I tried to come out here yesterday to fish and the rain ran me off and I swung by the fish hatchery instead just to go kind of scope it out. And the fish have definitely moved up further in there. So I'm thinking maybe they're not here out in the main canal because they're all kind of stacked up at the mouth to Strawberry Creek. That's what I'm hoping. I don't know, but I'm gonna head over there. It's about maybe a quarter mile, half mile. It's not far, but if I'm gonna move locations, I might as well have hooks in the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and start trolling something on the way over there. See if by some miracle I could pick up one of these fish right out the bat, but I'm not very hopeful. I came out here mentally prepared for a grind, but I only got about three hours of light left, so it's not gonna be a long grind. We'll see if I can bang this out my last day here in Door County. If I don't get one today, I'm gonna go home not having caught a salmon out of Lake Michigan and I'm gonna be really upset. Time to fish this hard. Let's get after it. All right guys, so like we learned last time from John, these fish are not eating anything. They are up here to lay their eggs and then they're all going to perish. The reason you can catch them still is because they are super aggressive. So you think about white-tailed deer, bucks in the rut, when they're mating, they get super aggressive. Males fight other males. These salmon do the same thing. So they're just angry, they're pissed off, they're fired up, hormones are raging. And so we're gonna be, I'm gonna be throwing noisy, quick moving lures, hoping for just that reaction strike. It swims in front of their face and they're mad and they just, ah, just bite it, right? So I'm gonna start off with a rattle trap. I got a bright color, it's noisy. The light's pretty low right now, it's dark, and so this is gonna make sure that they at least know it's there. And hopefully, I'm kinda hoping that rattle will sort of piss them off even more and get them to bite. We'll see. So I'm gonna roll that on one side, and on the other side, basically just a simple 
crankbait, stick bait type of thing, long crankbait, bright colors again. And this one I'm hoping will get down deeper where a lot of these fish are hanging out. And since I got one thing that dives deep and one thing that just kind of slowly sinks, I control both of these and not really have to worry about them fouling up. All right, I got 12 hooks in the water on two lures. Hopefully we can bang one out before we even get to the spot, but not too hopeful of that. Out here with John last few days, that tree right there, they call that the willow, has just been stacked with these fish, but I haven't seen a single one since I got out here. It's not promising. Oh, I just, okay. I just saw one out at the mouth of that creek where I'm heading. It's a good sign. Oh. That's promising. Oh, there's another one. Look, twice. Kind of right in this zone. I like that. shallow here it's good I like that I'm seeing life again over here by the strawberry creek everywhere you look big fish coming out of the water and fishermen not hooking up crazy This is so nuts. Well, the spoon does not have the perfect action, but I think it's fine. These fish aren't picky. They're not eating again. So if it looks a little weird, I don't think that matters so much in this particular kind of fishing. Even the dog's upset looking at all these fish. Oh my gosh. Right here. Oh, these fish are so wild. Oh my god, this place is so wild. <laughs> that is so insane. These giant fish are coming out like this and I can't buy a bite. It'd be hard to stay motivated to cast if I'm being honest. Yeah. Several at once. shy. Except when it comes to fighting your lure. Oh, I just felt I just bumped something else. I think it was another one. Come on. I'm literally hitting you in the head with it. Someone eat it. For the love of God, please. I'm begging you. Just kidding. I'm not panicked. I'm not. I'm cool. Totally composed. Any second now. Oh. 
Well, the weather held off. One good thing going for me, it's not raining. It is cold, temps have dropped. Beautiful sunset rolling in, but I'm about out of time out here, ladies and gents. It's getting dark. Cannot believe I've been out here three times with these fish. I haven't caught one. As soon as you think you're hot stuff, thinking you're skilled angler, you should come out here in the fall, do this. Humbling, to say the least. Depressing, on some level. Goodness gracious, fish everywhere. You would think with this many fish here, like I would have just snagged one by now. I mean, just statistically, I'd have ran a hook into one of these things, but you know, I mean, it was crazy. Like not only are they not biting my lure, they're like actively avoiding it. It's the only explanation that I haven't at least snagged one yet. I just want to see one. I don't care how I catch them at this point. I don't plan on keeping it. I just want to get towed around a little bit, knock this fish off my list. They are making it difficult. But look at that sunset. Hard to be too upset. Never seen so many fish in my life, not been able to buy a bite. <laughs> Crazy. I do not remember the last time a fish eluded me so thoroughly. It's frustrating. Tough pill to swallow. Last night was a bust, in case you didn't gather that, in case you thought I was holding out on you, not showing you the monster salmon I caught. I'm not taking no for an answer. I was supposed to leave Wisconsin today. I extended my stay at the RV part that I'm staying at. I am not leaving Lake Michigan without one of these salmon. So I'm back at it. I'm out here in the middle of the day now, not because I think that's a good time to do this, but because I just want to give myself enough time then maybe I'll have a shot at catching one of these fish. I shored up my tactics. I called John, I went to the tackle shop. I got another way to catch these fish. I'm coming out with a couple different tactics today. I got a secondary spot, got a plan B spot. We'll see, you guys. I don't, confidence is at an all time low. But I got time, I got everything I need to catch these fish. I'm feeling hopeful. Launching a different spot today, I'll tell you that on our way out. Pretty cool spot we're launching in. An old man in the parking lot last night told me that the day before yesterday, during the rain, he watched five guys catch their limit, that's five fish each, 25 salmon he saw pulled up in four hours in the middle of the day while it was raining. I don't know if you remember me saying this, but I didn't go fishing that day because it was raining and it's hard for me to film in the rain. Sounds like that was a huge goof. So there's rain in the forecast today for this afternoon. It's cold, I'm not looking forward to it. But if it gets me one of these salmon, <laughs> I don't care anymore, you guys. <laughs> Full on desperation mode. But let's get after it. Kayak's down, we're ready to launch. Please, fish gods, I'll do anything. <laughs> anyway, I'm losing it, you guys. See you out there. All right, so today I'm launching right here in Strawberry Creek. And look, I mean, that's salmon right there in front of me. If you remember, you can't fish here in Strawberry Creek. You can't fish within 500 feet of the mouth. Look at these guys. And I mean, you can see why, right? Like, it, this is like redfish in the marsh. These are 
30 pound fish just stacked up in here in two feet of water. It would literally be fish in a barrel, even more so than out in the canal. It's definitely salmon in here. Seeing evidence of that everywhere. But we're gonna cruise through this, come out at the mouth. I gotta get at least 500 feet away from it, but I got a backup spot today. If that's not paying off, it's not too far down the canal, maybe another half mile. And I got a second tactic, second technique that we're gonna try and kind of double time for these fish. I'll explain that when we get to the spot. But beautiful little paddle right here. I mean, not a bad way to start the afternoon regardless. Yeah, now we're cruising. Oh my goodness. Sweet baby Jesus, please let me get one of these fish. It's been a little while since I've been humbled quite like this. And uh, you know, honestly, I kind of love it. Like if we had come out here and bam, bam, whack two of these fish in the first five minutes, I'd have been like, well, Salmon, that's lame, you know? Now, day four out here trying for them, no fish to hand. When I get one, it's gonna be a very gratifying catch. The struggle is what makes it all worthwhile. There's that saying, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze? To me, the juice is all the sweeter because of the squeeze, you know, that having to work for whatever it is you're wanting is what makes whatever you're wanting worth having, you know? A little life lesson in there. I don't have much else to tell you in terms of how to catch salmon. Clearly, I'm not your guy. So maybe we'll talk about philosophy a little bit. Salmon all here, look, fins out of the water. Look at that, look at that. God, there's like six right there. Look, look, look. Oh, it's they're stacked right here. Look at this. All right, guys, well, I'm no expert, but I think, I think there's some salmon in here. Just getting this weird sneaking suspicion that there might be a salmon or two in this water. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's giving me that, that feeling. Look at this. <laughs> Look at how many salmon. I'm bird dogging out of here right now. Oh my God. Feel like that girl in that movie about the geese where she's flying with the geese swimming with the salmon out here in the lightning kayak trying to catch these spawning salmon this is attempt number four have not caught one yet despite them being like this look at this oh my goodness insane oh i gotta catch one of these i knew i was gonna get a little show coming through here but i didn't think there'd be this many Jeez, I've hit a couple with my fins. Now you can probably see why they don't let you fish in here, right? They're trying to protect these fish while they're spawning, while they're vulnerable, while they're doing this, you know? So the other spot I'm talking about is Strawberry Creek Estates, which is a development down here. And they've basically got like a, whoo, like a marina, I guess you call it a harbor. I don't know what they call it up here. I'd call it a marina, but they got a marina for this little private ritzy development and there's really good riprap and there's a, a, a really distinct channel going in there and uh the guy at the tackle shop where i was picking up the plan b tactic we'll talk about when we get there he said that up in those in that marina there's fish he said uh, that it should be stacked in there and he thinks some of those fish will actually still be eating whereas these fish at the creek are pretty much done you're kind of hoping for a miracle in here he said those fish are a little earlier in their stage and they might still be eating. We'll see. But I just got in here to the harbor at these Strawberry Creek Estates and I just saw a fish come out of the water. So that's a good sign. Now I gotta be careful. I don't think there'll be too much boat traffic. It's cold. We're kind of in the off season now, but it is the weekend now. So I can't really like anchor up right here in the middle. But basically I'm gonna drop anchor and I'm gonna soak an egg sack out behind me while I cast in front of me. And I'll explain what that is and why I'm using it here in a sec. Let me find a good spot to set up shop here. So since my anchor's set up really shallow, I'm gonna get a little creative here. That'll hold me. See why it wouldn't. 
Now, whoever owns this dock is probably not gonna be stoked that I'm tied off to it, but it looks pretty abandoned right now. All right, so now let me explain this plan B talk tactic I keep talking about. So like we've been talking about, these fish are spawning, right? They're laying their eggs, they're trying to mate, reproduce. So another thing you can fish for them with, even though they're not really eating right now, is roe, eggs, salmon, eggs. And now, the reason these salmon will bite eggs is not because they're hungry and it's an easy meal, although other fish will do that. The biggest fish I ever caught in my life hit salmon eggs, 250 pound sturgeon. The reason they, the reason salmon will eat other salmon eggs is because of competition. So basically, especially the female salmon, look at, oh yeah, they're in here. And that one doesn't look as far, okay, this is, this is good. We gotta get a line out. So the reason they'll hit eggs is to eliminate the competition's eggs. So basically, you know, these, these fish, they go and they just eject their eggs in these spawning locations. The males come in and kind of, you know, put their ejaculate all over it and that's how they get fertilized. So if you're a female salmon and you want to increase the chances that your eggs get fertilized as opposed to the other salmon's eggs, what's a good way to do that? Eliminate some of the competing salmon eggs. So they will eat eggs just trying to get some of their competitors eggs out of the water so that theirs have a better chance of getting fertilized and eventually hatching really really interesting to me I find these fish just so cool so that's my plan Oof! I got basically a slip bobber set up it's a bobber that, that allows the line to pass through it so you can kind of set the depth then you got to stop up above it simple split shot and then a treble hook I'm using a treble hook because I'm desperate otherwise I'd probably just use a J hook but I'm gonna throw this out let the thing sink down the bobber will keep it up off the bottom I'm just gonna let it kind of just do its thing. And then while it's out there soaking, hopefully it gets bit eventually, but I can be casting these other techniques we've been talking about at the same time. Kind of double up here, because this is my last shot at this. I gotta leave Wisconsin tomorrow, I was supposed to leave today. So, man, they're in here thick though. They're jumping out everywhere. And these fish don't look quite as like zombie. They're not quite as dark. They're not silver either, but I think they're earlier in the stage, which means they'll be more likely to bite. Everything feels like it's lining up pretty well right now, but it also felt that way the last three days that I've been out here and I got nothing to show for it. All right, so I got the spawn sack. I'm gonna put two of these, I'm, we're, we're going for broke here, guys. This is like $5 for 12 of these little sacks. I'm about to put two on at once. All right, there's a couple egg sacks. Now, now this stuff's gonna be messy and stinky do this off the edge of the boat but these eggs don't stick to stuff very well but what's good is that the sack they come in is called a skein it's kind of the uh the sack that sort of holds these eggs together inside the fish the eggs stick to that and that i think will actually stay on this hook semi-decently hopefully but i'm just globbing these guys on there i mean that is a tasty tasty little morsel. I mean, really, you know, who knows, but I could end up catching some other predatory fish. You know, when these salmon come in here, they're releasing spawn all into the water and a lot of fish will follow them up, uh, especially smaller fish, and they'll eat that spawn, right? That's a free, easy meal. All right, well, I'm seeing a lot of activity off here to the right. Get my net ready, because I'm about to need it. So I'm gonna throw this guy off to the right. Make sure my drag is kind of tight enough to set the hook itself, but not so tight I'm going to get rocked by one of these things. All right, well now we're fishing. <laughs> Big boy, or girl, whatever. Now we're fishing. Now I'm going to probably start with the spoon. Now the question is if I can Make this happen. There's fish in here. Keep an eye on this bobber. We'll see what happens. What's cool about this egg sack is I pretty much, I mean, there's a chance I could snag one, I guess, if it just swam into it. But probably if that thing goes off, I'm gonna have that fish in the mouth, which is really what I want. And then I'll be able to keep it. All these fish are gonna die. And so, you know, I just, they're all gonna go to waste other than, you know, predators, natural predators, but I wouldn't mind taking home some salmon, maybe 
find someone to help me smoke it. But if you snag them, you're not legally allowed to keep them. But guys, at this point, if I snag one with one of these lures, I'll be a happy can. I just, I just want to get my hands on one. Done being picky. I'll take them any which way I can get them. Now, one thing that's tricky about my setup right now, I'm realizing in this moment, is that if I hook a fish on either one of these, first off, I'm gonna have to reel the other one in so they don't wrap around and make a huge mess. Second off, I mean, mobilized by this anchor. So if it tries to run in like between these docks or something, I'm not gonna be able to follow it. I'll probably have to unclip from the anchor and hope it stays on that thing because the line's too short, I'll never get it back. I just broke that rod. I just broke that rod, cut my line off. This kind of, <laughs> this is starting to feel like par for the course, you guys. I just snapped that rod three guides down. My line broke. Start, guys, I'm starting <laughs> to feel cursed <laughs> when it comes to these fish. I'm laughing, but that's actually really upsetting. I just, I even thought about that when I put the rod in that rod holder, that's my casting side. It's gonna be really funny if that bobber goes under now with no rod attached to it. Maybe I could chase it around and try to pick it up. Okay, well, I'm gonna go retrieve that. I just can't win right now. I just cannot win. Five minutes it took for the first disaster. That's a new record. So since I don't have another slip bobber set up, I have to use one of these kind of clip-on bobbers. And the problem with that is that so that I can cast it, it, it just can't, I can't run it too deep. So now I'm gonna be fishing pretty high in the water column, which is not really what I want, but there are fish coming up. So hopefully one high in the water column will swim by and, and grab this anyways. I'm gonna go ahead and cast it off to my left this time. Same mistake again. I just have to watch for boats coming. For a second, it looked like my bobber went, got pulled on. Yep, yep, it is under. It is under. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. Oh, something grabbed it. Something grabbed it. And there's eggs missing. Oh my god. You guys, I think I just got a bite. All the natural eggs are missing. The ones that are in the net that I got at the store are still on there. That's why they put them in the net so it'll stay on there. But I watched the cord go down for a second and then it went down hard. And I mean, but I just was too slow grabbing it, I guess. I don't know, maybe it was something small. Maybe it wasn't a salmon. It wouldn't take much to pull this cork under, but I got a, I got a bite. <laughs> okay confidence just skyrocketed we're gonna get a little more of this natural stuff to sweeten the deal on this get it right back out there oh my gosh I thought that was it my heart is pounding I was so excited right there and then of course nothing to show for it but that's okay that's okay we're gonna do a big old honking glob of this stuff I mean Dinner is served, salmon. The buffet is open. Golden Corral, all you can eat. Man, the lot the rod loaded up. I mean, it wasn't a it wasn't a perch, you know, it wasn't a a bluegill, which I think would eat these salmon eggs. Maybe not out here in the middle, up high in the water column. So I mean that was a sizable something. That rod was bent over. And I was looking right at the cork when it happened. I mean, it, it got, it, that, was, that was a fish. That was a fish. All right, ladies and gents. I feel like we're getting warmer. All right, guys. Well, I told myself I'd give, my, give three hours back at the mouth. It's now four o'clock. It's gonna be dark a little after seven. I mean, I got the one bite in here, but I don't know that that's the spot so much as 
this new technique I'm doing. So I'm gonna go back out to the mouth. I know there's a bunch of fish there too. And we'll see what happens. Absurd, man. These are probably the most frustrating fish I've ever, ever targeted in my whole life. I've never seen anything like this. All right, so I'm back out in the original spot. I had some issues getting my anchor to hold. Had to kind of rig something up to get a little more line in it so it actually hold me, but looks like I'm sitting put now. Just toss the egg sack out. And now I'm gonna start casting this way. I've seen some fish jump, not crazy amounts, but there's definitely still fish here. I'm gonna start off with a spoon. It's kind of the last hurrah here, guys. Let's see what happens. but he's going crazy and he's heading towards my other line. I gotta get that up. Oh my God. Oh my God, you guys. This is it. This is it. Oh no. Okay. Screw that for right now. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, he crossed my other line. That's okay. He's heading out to the main channel. Oh my goodness. You guys. <laughs> we got one. Oh. Ah, oh, feels pretty good. Feels like a pretty good fish. Oh, rip and drag. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Let's stay focused and not screw this up, you guys. I just cast it and the second I started reeling, it hit it. I think maybe I just landed it right in front of his face and, and it just hit it out of reaction without getting a good look at it. Oh my God, it's tugging. Come on, get this in. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. It's been a long time coming. I'm going to unclip off my anchor. And we're going to go for a little slate right here. <laughs> I feel like a lunatic right now. Oh, he's getting close to my anchor line. Get away from there. Yes. We got one. Well, it ain't in yet, but we got one. We got one on. First time I felt one of these fish. It was screaming, dragging in the beginning, then it ran at me, and then it ran kind of laterally sideways from me. Headed out to open water. Now he's turned back around. He's kind of pulling me into the mouth. Oh, yeah. Good fish. This is a good fish. Oh, I just do not want to screw this up. One problem I got is my net's not really big enough for these things. Unless I got a small one, but we'll see. I don't even care. Oh my God. We got one. <laughs> I've been out here for maybe an hour and a half back here at the mouth. I haven't been filming. I mean, just I'm running out of battery life and SD card space and everything. Running out of patience. I left my anchor over there. Got a couple floats on it so I can go back and find it after this is done, but. And John got back in town and he actually met me out here. He just drove by 30 minutes ago, checked on me. He was laughing at me that I hadn't got one yet. And now he's over in the canal trolling. I wish he could, was here to see this. He knows how much time and, and work I've been putting into these fish. Oh, he's gonna be so, so stoked when he hears I got one. This is on that spoon. Pretty much the second it landed. And she's getting here close to the boat now. Oh, look at her. Oh, it looks like it's in her mouth. Oh my gosh. She's not a giant, not as big as John's but a good fish nonetheless. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, there she goes. Oh. oh, please don't pop it now. No, don't you do it. Oh, she's thrashing, head shaking. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't get in my pedals. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at her, it is in her mouth. This girl's gonna be dinner. I did not do all this, just let this girl die and rot on the bank. This is gonna be dinner. All right, here we go, guys. Wish me luck on this maneuver. 
Oh, okay. Okay. She's not ready. Not ready. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe it. Oh, she's a good one. I was I was saying she wasn't big. She's nice. She's nice. I'm really worried though. I don't like this this hook's just kind of barely in her. Oh my god, here we go. Let's go! Unbelievable. You're joking me. <laughs> No way that just happened. What did I say earlier? My net was not big enough. I just tried to get her in the net. She didn't fit. The lure hit got stuck in the net and she just flopped out. Oh my God, you guys. Did I mention that I'm feeling like I'm cursed at this? There it was. And there she went. I even had her in the mouth, which I, at this point I didn't care, but. John's never gonna stop laughing when he hears what just happened. I even was talking to him and he, he looked at my net and he was like, buddy, that ain't gonna do it. That's not what you want. And I was like, well, that's all I got. And I didn't want to buy a net at the tackle store. I even looked at them. And the one I wanted was like 60 something dollars. And I said, nah, this will be fine. And it just cost me that fish. I hate this net. I've been meaning to switch it out for a rubber coated net. It gets hung on everything. And there it was. It got hung on my lure and just popped that fish free. guys it has been I don't remember the last time I felt so disheartened and defeated in the fishing world than I do right now in this moment that is unbelievable Murphy's law like whatever can go wrong is going wrong this week I'm feeling like the universe does not want me to catch one of these things and I don't know why it's mad at me damn it well, no use pouting, no use crying. I'm gonna go get back on my anchor and just get back to it. I mean, what else, what else can I do? God, kidding me? I cannot catch a break Well guys, I'm throwing in the towel. I give up. I just does not feel in the cards. I'm out of time. I gotta get out of Wisconsin. I gotta start heading south in the RV. Winter is coming and my rig's not rated for the winters up here. That is for sure. To say it's a tough pill to swallow after coming that close, it would be the understatement of my life. I think I am just beside myself i cannot believe after all this time and work i've put into this you know one split second decision trying to rush that net job and that was it that's all it took to go from hero back to zero and you know it's frustrating i'm in here and i mean there's the salmon are you could walk across them and i mean i could i could literally free net them in here you know, one cast with that spoon in here, and, and at least I would snag one if one didn't hit it. But I'm not in the business of poaching fish, even though, I mean, the hatchery's not operating this year. All these fish are here for no reason. They're not gonna spawn, and they're all gonna die. But I already got one fisheries citation this year. I'm not trying to get a second one. So 
I mean, you know, leader counts offshore. I gotta feel like half the fish being in my net counts for something, but I hope you learned something about these king salmon. I hope you find them as fascinating as I do. They're really, really cool creatures, and I mean, I just have a tremendous amount of respect for these fish now, especially after they just embarrassed me four days that I come out here. Cannot believe, I, it really, in the beginning, it didn't even cross my mind I wasn't gonna get one. Like, when we first got out here and we saw them, I was like, oh, it's a gimme, it's a layup. No, this is a half court shot, blindfolded with both arms tied behind your back is what it is. Oh, but hey, I hooked one, we got to see one up close. John caught that one, I mean, it's just been cool learning about them, observing them. It's been a treat. Kind of a sour treat, <laughs> but a treat nonetheless. But just what a beautiful place. What a cool fishery. I will be coming back up here next summer. That was not the original plan, but COVID's thrown everything for a loop. I'm gonna be coming back up here, and I think I'm gonna be up here in the summer, and John and I are gonna go out for like real salmon, the silver salmon out in the main lake, trolling for those guys. Uh, and maybe then we can kind of tie back into this and, and you can kind of see them in, in their two different life stages, but I'm over it, you guys. I'm cold, I'm tired, I'm hungry. I have not had a bite of food all day, it's seven o'clock. I'm out. Thank you guys for sticking with it. I hope you at least got a few laughs at my expense, if nothing else. Uh, sometimes it's just not your day, you know what I mean? In this case, it wasn't my week. But if you guys enjoyed it, I promise if, if you're new to field trips, normally I catch fish, I promise. Uh, so please subscribe if you enjoyed it. Love to see you back here next week. We got more cool stuff coming up up here and on my way back down south for winter. But I'm out. Peace. See you next week.